So in this session, we're looking specifically at the Delphi study as a method of consensus research. Now, it is by far the most common form of consensus research and quite effective in many, many cases. Now, essentially, the Delphi process involves formulating a panel of experts. Now, they do need to be experts, and that's probably one of the key aspects of this form of consensus research. It's not a general survey of a population. Um, it's not focus groups and things of that nature. It relies upon expertise in order for it to derive an expert consensus rather than just a population consensus. So you will need to select a group of experts. Now normally it's between say five and 12, it can range. And particularly with online, as we'll talk about, we can have much larger numbers. But your group of experts are then presented with a research problem that you provide them as the researcher or the moderator. Now, this question needs to generally be answered from a, from a range of possible answers. Um, so one approach is to provide your participants with a research question, and then they suggest possible responses to that research question. And that's what you're doing as part of our practice Delphi study. Another approach is for you as the researcher or moderator to come up with a list of possible responses to the research question. And then your participants will then select from those which they have the most affinity for, which they believe best answers the research question. And that's the approach you'll be using for your Delphi study as part of your portfolio item. So there are other approaches, but that's the two most common approaches for research um, question generation and the options available to answer that research question. Now, another step that normally occurs as part of that process is for you to provide your participants with some information about the research question. It might be some readings, might be some summaries of the research but some information upon which to base the decisions that they're going to make um, can often be definitions as to what the various terms or the different responses mean in more elaboration than just the sentence that might be presented as part of the Delphi study choices. So you need to think about how you provide that information to your own participants. And in general, the more information provided, the better, but you don't want to make it too onerous for the experts, the participants in your study to actually engage with. So once the first round of voting occurs, your next role as a moderator or researcher is to look at whether or not a consensus has been achieved. If everyone has agreed, or if say 80% of the participants have agreed, then you probably don't even need to go to a second round. Now, in your case, for your assignment, you do need to do a second round. Um, but in your research process for a Delphi study, once a consensus is achieved, then the Delphi study can conclude. If a consensus hasn't been achieved, what is known as a dissensus, then as the researcher or moderator, you will synthesize the results of the um, participant voting uh, and you might elaborate on some elements and then you will pass that back to, to the participants, to the experts, for them to either conduct some more discussion or to just go straight into it, another round of voting. Now, part of the process of reformulating what you provide to your participants may be that you reduce the number of possible responses. The initial survey might have had um, 20 different options. As a result of the first round of the Delphi study, you may then decide that only five of those are really in contention. And so the participants will be presented with those five and asked to re-vote on those. You may also need to clarify what some of the terms or the differences between some of your um, possible options may be. Some of them may be too similar. And so Participants may have been voting for those where together they may have formed a strong consensus that the way the 
the responses were formulated, it provided two options of answering in the same way. So part of this process is for you as the researcher to analyse what has occurred in the first round and to consider then what you present back to your participants for the second round of the Delphi study process. So it's presented back, the participants look at that new information, they vote again, and then hopefully a consensus is reached. If not, it then goes through another process of analysis and um, dissensus, where you then reformulate the material again and present it back to your experts for a third round and a fourth round if needed. So eventually you must make the decision as to when a consensus has been achieved. It might be, say, when you get 70% voting for one particular um, approach or response to the research question. It might be a much higher or lower, depending upon um, what you're studying. So a key aspect of this is on your selection of your team of experts, your consensus panel. If you choose too many and they are too diverse in their views, it may be that everyone just ends up voting for their own particular perspective and it's very hard to then develop a consensus from that um, wide variety of possibilities. Conversely, if it's too few and there's a clear demarcation of two groups, one group arguing strongly for one perspective, another group strongly uh, committed to another perspective, there may not be enough uh, flexibility to be able to switch perspectives. So having a number of perspectives allows more likelihood of people being able to reframe and move their perspective from their initial point of view. Um, but having too many possible perspectives can conversely be problematic as well. And that's a big part of that analysis process and reformulation re as you identify what the problems are and represent that back to your expert panel in subsequent rounds. So that's the essential process of the Delphi study. And we'll be going through the practice round in the tutorial and discussing it further there.